there, I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel made by Kathcraft. Thank you very much for joining me for my latest video. In this video, I'm going to be sharing another week of my handmade summer wardrobe for this July. This is my second week running of doing this type of video and basically I'm going to pop on every day this week from Saturday today until Friday and share with you what I'm wearing for my handmade wardrobe. And it'll be lots of nice summery items because we are having a really lovely, sunny, warm July here in the UK. And I've really enjoyed popping on every day last week and showing what I'm wearing because it really encouraged me to choose different items from a handmade wardrobe and pick some of those garments that I haven't worn for quite a while. So I thought I'd carry on and continue and do it this week as well. And this week is supposed to be really hot here in the UK. The temperature for Monday is forecast to be 39 degrees, which would be the hottest day on record here in the UK. So it's probably going to be a bit too hot um, on Monday and maybe Tuesday too. But it'll definitely encourage me to reach my really lovely warm weather um, handmade garments. So I'm looking forward to popping on every day and sharing them with you. So I'll kick off this video by sharing with you what I'm wearing today. And today I've got a play suit on that I made using this pattern here, which I know is a really popular pattern. It's the Zadie jumpsuit pattern by Paper Theory. And it's a really nice jumpsuit pattern for woven fabrics. And I'll hold up the line drawing so you can see all the details. You can either make a sleeveless version, which is what I've made here, which kind of ends up being sort of almost like a cap sleeve length, or you can add on sleeves to make it slightly more cozy. Then it's got a wrap style front with these waist ties that pull all the way around and cinch the waist in. It's got little pleats at the front and back to give a bit of shaping to the bodice. Um, the wrap makes it have a sort of V-neck, which is quite a nice um, V here, and it gives quite good coverage, I think, too. And then it sort of rounds out into these sort of wide leg trousers with slash pockets that are quite nice and roomy. And then for my version, I've just cropped it off into a shorts length to make it into a play suit rather than a jumpsuit. And it's got a good size range on this pattern too. The size range I've got is a 0 to 20. There's also a 16 to 28 version, which I think takes it up to a bust size of 56 inches. And it's a really nice make. I think the pattern says it's for advanced beginners. There are no sort of um, zips or button closures or anything, which makes it a bit more simple because you pretty much um, sort of get the shaping from the tie that goes around the middle. There are a couple of fiddly bits. I guess the most fiddly bit is the neckline is finished with exposed bias binding. I'll try and come a bit closer so you can see a little bit. Which is a little bit fiddly to add, but I think it gives a really lovely finish and it goes all the way around um, the tie piece here. So it's a really lovely finish, I think, around the neckline on this pattern. And I think it helps it to sort of sit nice and flat too. I do find it doesn't gape or anything once you've tied it all in place. So yeah, it's a really nice, comfy one to wear. And the version I made here, I, in, in terms of sizing, I think I made the size six. Um, the size six is designed for a bust of 31 and a half inches, a waist of 24 inches and hips of 34 inches, which is slightly smaller than my measurements. But before I made this pattern, I remember I did quite a lot of reading up on how people had gone with the sizing and fitting of it. And basically the general consensus seems to be it does come up a bit on the roomy side and I didn't want it to be too roomy. So I sized down and I think this size ended up quite good for me. And I did read a lot that people had found that the body is quite long on this play suit. So a lot of people had ended up cropping or sort of shortening the bodice slightly. But I have quite a long torso. So when I made my first version, I just made the straight size six as per the pattern. And I found the fit came out just fine on me. But if you did have a shorter body, you might want to consider maybe shortening it a little bit because I do have a longer torso. So I was quite lucky, I think, because this pattern pretty much fit me straight from the packet, which isn't always the case. And I know often with jumpsuits and play suits, there are quite a lot of different fitting elements to consider, like the body length, the crotch length and things. But yeah, it just fit me straight from the packet. So I was quite lucky. And my Zadie play suit that I'm wearing today is the second version that I've made of this pattern. I've made two play suit versions to date. And I made this version in a really pretty viscose linen blend that I got from Sister Mintaka. I got it quite a long time ago now, so I don't think it's still in stock on their website, unfortunately. But I think the print on it's really pretty. It's got sort of like a large scale leaf print in white and navy. And if you've watched my channel, my videos before, you'll know I do love a bit of navy. And I think viscose linen blends work really well for the Zadie pattern. Um, I think the viscose provides a bit of drape and a bit of lightness for warmer weather. But the linen adds a bit of structure and a bit of durability and texture too. So yeah, this is my version. I'll put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see how it looks as a play suit. It's a really nice, comfy one to wear. It's really easy to put on with a wrap tie. I've just got it tied at the front. I'll stand up so you can see. And it's just a perfect one for warmer weather. So that's 
what I'm wearing today. I'm going to head off now and spend some time with my family. We're planning this evening to camp out in the garden in a tent, which will hopefully be nice and cool compared to being in the house. That should be a bit of fun. So I'll pop on again and join you on Sunday to share with you what I'm wearing tomorrow. So yeah, I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. Hello, it's Sunday morning now and I'm back inside after a night out in the garden in the tent. And we had a really nice night out there actually. It was lovely and cool in the tent. The children slept really well and even had a bit of a lion, which is always a bonus. But now I'm back inside, I've had a shower, I've got dressed in my handmade outfit for the day. So while they're having a play in the other room with my husband, I thought I'd pop in here to share with you what I'm wearing today. And today I'm wearing a tunic dress that I made using this pattern here, which is the Tilly and the Buttons Stevie pattern, which is one of my older sewing patterns, but one I still really love. I'll show you the line drawings for it. It's another woven pattern for a top and a tunic dress. And this pattern is designed for beginners and it's a pattern I made when I was quite new to sewing and I found it really nice and easy to follow. I do always find that Tilly the Buttons patterns hold your hands and this one definitely does. But it's for quite a loose fit top and tunic dress and um, with grown on sleeves. It's got this little back yoke and at the back you can either secure it with a little button and rouleau loop or a tie. And then it just goes down into quite a straight, loose fit top or dress. Um, the neckline's finished with a facing. Um, and it's just like quite a nice, simple pattern and quite an easy, breezy, relaxed shape. So perfect for a summery top or dress, especially if you make it in a nice, lightweight woven fabric. And in terms of sizing on the Stevie pattern, it currently goes from a UK 6 up to a UK 24. And the size 24 is designed for a bust of 48 inches. And whenever I make the Stevie top or tunic, I always go for the UK 8. Um, which is their size 2, which is designed for a bust of 32 inches, a waist of 26 inches and hips of 35 inches. And I'm 32, 26, 36, so I'm an inch larger on the hips, but I've never bothered grading out on this pattern because when you look at the finished garment measurements, they show there's plenty of ease um, on this pattern. It's designed to be quite loose fitting. So with the size 2, even though I'm an inch larger than what it's designed for, there's still plenty of room at the hips when I make the tunic version. And the version I've made today, I made in this really pretty viscose fabric that I got from Self Made. And I got it last year, but I had a look on the website this morning and it is still in stock, so I'll link it down below. And I really like Self Made viscose fabrics. I think they're really nice quality. And this one is lovely and lightweight and soft, um, but also opaque, which is really nice too. It's got this really pretty sort of mid, mid blue base, like it's almost like a royal blue base with these lovely flowers with whites and yellows on. I think it's a really pretty colour combination. And I did have this fabric for a while and I'm denied about what to make with it, but I thought the Stevie would really showcase the print because it's quite a simple silhouette. And when I made this Stevie tunic dress, I made the straight size two without any adjustments, but I did also make a waist tie to go around the waist and cinch it in a little bit because I really like to wear my Stevie tunic dresses like that. I do sometimes wear them without the waist tie when it's really hot weather and I just want it to be really cool and loose and breezy, but I really like the shape the waist tie gives and I'll stand up a little bit so you can see what it looks like with the waist tie on. It's just quite a narrow little waist tie that I wrap around and I've got tied at the back at the moment and it just cinches it in nicely there. And I think the tie around the waist then kind of also mirrors the tie I've got at the back of the neck to kind of hold the yoke in place there too. And I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. I really like how loose and breezy the stevie is around the arms. It's just generally nice and billowy, so perfect for warm weather like we're having today. So that's what I'm wearing today, but I'm going to head off and spend some time with my family now. So I'll see you again tomorrow. Like I mentioned yesterday, tomorrow is set to be the hottest day ever on records here. So it's going to be a real scorcher. So I'm sure whatever I'm wearing tomorrow, I'm going to be feeling quite hot. But we shall see what it's like tomorrow and I'll join you again then. So yeah, see you again tomorrow. Bye. Hello, it's Monday morning and I've just got home from the school run. And it's already quite hot and sunny outside today and it's only due to get hotter. Um, today the school have asked that we collect the children at one o'clock, so a bit earlier than usual, just so we can bring them home and keep them at home in the call for the hottest part of the day, which makes sense. So I've got a few jobs to get on with this morning. I'm sure this morning will whiz by before I need to go and collect them. But I thought I'd pop on first and share with you what I'm wearing today. So today I've got on an old ready to wear top, this uh, kind of ribbed cotton jersey vest top. But I'm wearing a handmade skirt and I'll stand up so you can see the skirt before I talk a little bit about it. And this is a skirt that I made using an online tutorial that I found on the Megan Nielsen Patterns website. It's a free tutorial and I'll link it down below and I'll pop a picture up so you can see what it looks like. It's just for a basic woven skirt with an elasticated waistband 
and the tutorial is written to be able to make it in any size so you can make a children's version or adults version and it's designed for any woven fabric so you can make it in something really drapey and swishy like a viscose or something with a bit more structure like a cotton poplin or anything in between and I came across this tutorial um, for this fabric because I originally had bought this fabric which is really lovely cotton lawn fabric I'll stand up again so you can see it a bit more closely it's a really pretty cotton lawn fabric with these lovely sort of splodges of different colours on this sort of indigo or sort of dark coloured base. And I originally bought this fabric and loved it and wanted to make a dress in it. This was a couple of years ago. And I tried to make a free dress pattern. I think it was called the Heidi Day Dress by Wearable Studio. And it just went really wrong. Um, it was one of my first real sewing fails where it didn't fit right. It just wasn't, it just didn't, didn't work um, for various reasons. And I kind of had to scrap it a little bit. So I was really disappointed because I love this fabric and I was disappointed to have sort of spoiled the fabric and making something that just really didn't work for me. But I found I had just enough of this fabric left over to be able to squeeze out this elasticated skirt. And I was really pleased to be able to make um, something out of this fabric so I could still enjoy wearing the fabric. And it's a really simple um, skirt and you don't need much fabric because there's only one seam. You basically cut one rectangle of fabric and then sew one seam on one side. So it doesn't have pockets or anything, it really is very simple. And then you just fold over the top and insert the elastic and it comes together really nicely. And I think actually it's turned out quite well because this fabric is obviously quite a busy fabric. So I think quite a simple skirt works really well with it. Um, so yeah, it's just quite a nice lightweight breezy one to wear and I'll put a picture up of me wearing it. Um, I pretty much made the skirt as long as I could with the fabric I had left over from my failed project. And I really enjoy wearing this one actually and I think it goes quite nicely with a bright coloured vest top. So that's what I'm wearing today to keep cool. Like I mentioned, I'll link the um, pattern down below. I think this fabric, it used to be in stock in quite a few places. I got it from an online shop that has unfortunately since closed down, but I was having a look um, this morning and seeing whether I could find it anywhere else and I couldn't find it at the moment. So I don't think it's in stock anywhere at the moment that I could find, which is a shame because it's a really pretty fun fabric. But that is what I'm wearing today to keep cool. So I'm going to go away now and get some jobs done before the heat really ramps up. So I'll see you again for tomorrow, which will be Tuesday. So yeah, see you tomorrow. Bye. Hello, it's Tuesday morning now and it's another very, very hot day here today. I think it actually feels hotter this morning than it did yesterday even, but it is due to cool down overnight tonight, which is really nice. So tomorrow I think it should be a temperature in the high 20s rather than the mid 30s like it has been the last two days. So I'm looking forward to it cooling down a little bit. And I've had a bit of a morning of it. Um, I went up on the school run with my children. And when I was up at school, my flip-flop broke. And um, the little sort of bit on the bottom that holds the spindle in place at the front just popped off. So I was thinking, oh no, I'm going to have to walk all the way home with just one flip-flop on. Um, but one of the teachers kindly went inside and got a sellotape dispenser out and brought it out for me. So I could kind of do a quick fix by sort of trying to sellotape it back together which worked quite well and I got nearly all of the way home um, with the flip-flop holding. I think it just broke and I had to walk about the last 100 metres with just one shoe on, so it wasn't too bad. Um, and luckily, at that time in the morning, the pavement wasn't too hot for my foot, so I was able to make it home okay. But I did feel a bit silly for those last 100 metres, but it's nice to be back home now. And I thought I'd pop on and share with you what I'm wearing today. And today I am wearing a hack of this pattern here. One of my favourites for summer is the Ogden Cami pattern by True Bias. A really nice woven cami top with this deep V at the front and back and spaghetti straps and quite a straight boxy fit. And it's got a good size range too. Um, I've got the um, US size 0 to 18 version. There's also, I think it's the US size 14 up to 30 version, which is pretty much the same, but it has bust starts and slightly wider straps. And I think it's a really nice cami top on its own, but it's also great for hacking. And I've done a few hacks. And the hack I'm wearing today is a tiered maxi dress version. So I'll stand up so you can see the tiers. And um, I colour blocked this one. So I've gone for two different colours of this fabric. So I'll stand up so you can see all the different tiers. So I basically cropped off the bodice and then added three tiers of gathered skirt. And I also added waist ties to sort of cinch it in a little bit at the waist, as you can see. So it's quite a nice simple um, hack and I've actually done a blog post talking all about this hack and the sort of dimensions I used for each of the skirt panels so I'll link that blog post down below in case you fancy checking it out 
And I made this um, dress in this really lovely tensile fabric that I got from First for Fabrics last year. I think they might have a bit of one of these colourways in stock, or at least last time I looked fairly recently they did. If they do still, I'll link them down below. I think it might have been the white colourway, I can't remember. But if I can find any in stock on the website, I'll link it down below. But yeah, I've got two colourways of the fabric, this sort of white with blue sort of pieces on. And I always think it looks like um, sort of palm leaves with sun coming through. And then also this blue colourway with the white. So kind of the, com the different contrasting colours of the blue and white. And this tensile fabric is lovely and lightweight and floaty. So it's perfect for this hot weather that we're having here right now. It is quite delicate fabric. So when I made this dress, I decided to enclose all of the seams just to give it the best chance of sort of washing and wearing well and lasting as long as possible. So I fully lined the bodice of this dress. So all of the bodice seams are enclosed within the lining. And then when I added on each skirt here, I decided to make some bias binding in this fabric and enclose each of the skirt tier seams in that bias binding. So I'll show you my bottom skirt tier seam here. You can see it's all enclosed by bias binding. So I'm quite happy with that finish. It took a bit more time to do than rather than use an overlocker, but I'm hoping it'll give the best chance of it lasting as long as possible. And I'll put up a picture of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on. I don't have a lot of maxi dresses for summer, but I do really enjoy wearing this one. And when I made it, I did make sure I didn't make the tiers too wide because I didn't want anything too full and swishy because um, I thought I wouldn't probably wear that. So it's quite a sort of subtle, I guess, um, gathered maxi dress. It doesn't get too big at the bottom, which is what I wanted. But all the details of how I put it together are in my blog post, which, like I mentioned, I'll link down below. So anyway, I better head off now and get a few jobs done. Like yesterday, I'm going to be picking the children up from school at one o'clock again today because it is going to get really hot again this afternoon. So I've got a bit of a shorter morning to get things done. So I better get on. So I'll see you again tomorrow for Wednesday, which will hopefully be a lot cooler than it is today. So fingers crossed and see you tomorrow. Bye. Hello, it's Wednesday morning now and I've just got back from the school run. And it's lovely out there this morning. It's really cooled down. There's a lovely refreshing breeze. I think we might even get some rain later, which would be really nice. The garden could really do with it. So I'm glad that the worst of the heat wave's over. Hopefully tonight we'll get a bit more sleep because it's been really hot the last couple of nights and we don't have air conditioning in our house. We've been relying on fans, which have been okay. Um, but yeah, it has been pretty hot still. But anyway, I thought I'd pop on this morning and share with you what I'm wearing. And today I've got another I'm ready to wear top. It's quite an old one. It kind of reminds me in its style of the Tilly and the Buttons Agnes tee. I think when it wears out, I might make another one um, using that pattern. But this is an old one I bought before I started sewing. But I am wearing some handmade shorts today and I'll stand up so you can see them. And these shorts are made using this pattern here which is the Megan Nielsen flint shorts and pants pattern, which is a really nice pattern. I've made two versions of it. I'll show you the line drawings. It's a woven shorts and pants pattern for quite a wide leg pants or shorts. Then it's got, it's quite a fitted waist. It's designed to sit right on your natural waist. It's got these pretty sort of tucks at the front and slash pockets and then darts at the back. So it gives lots of nice shaping from the hips up to the waist. And then the waistline, you can either secure it with a couple of buttons well, it's really hard to show that it's kind of not, not sort of um, properly focusing either with a couple of buttons or a little tie front detail maybe it'll be a bit more obvious to see here there we are buttons or a tie front detail and then if you make the tie front detail which is the one I've done on this pair of shorts there's a little internal button to sort of secure it in place as well so they come together really nicely um, and they're quite a cute shape I think with a sort of a-line sort of flared shape to them and they're designed to be made in sort of bottom weight medium weight fabrics and I made my version I'm wearing today in a viscose linen blend I think I can't remember what the percentages were but it's definitely higher on the linen than the viscose so it has got a bit of a structure from the linen which I think um, holds these shorts nicely I did go on to make another pair in a red colour that's quite similar to this t-shirt actually and I made that in a viscose linen blend that had a higher viscose content and that pair's a bit more drapey and doesn't hold the shape of the kind of flared style of these shorts so well I'll stand up again just so you can see the little tie and the details They're really comfy shorts to wear and I really like the shape of them. In terms of sizing, I've got the um, I've got the 0 to 20 size pattern, but there's also a Megan Nielsen curve version of the flint shorts and pants, which goes from size 14 up to 30. 
I think I made the size four based on my measurements, um, which is designed for waist of 26 and hips of 36, which is me. And if you look at the finished garment measurements, the waist for the size four is designed to be 26 because it's really designed to sort of hug your waist. And then the hip measurement, finished garment measurements, the size four is 39 inches. So there's plenty of room around my hips in that size. And I think they fit really nicely, actually. And I'll put a picture up so you can see what they look like on. I really like Megan Nielsen patterns. I find them really nice to follow. I think they're really well written. I think the patterns are really well drafted too. So yeah, I really enjoy wearing my flint shorts and they're nice for today with a little t-shirt where it is still on the hot side, but not quite as hot as it has been. So that's what I'm wearing today. It's my children's last day at school today. So I'm going to go away and get a load of things done that I want to get sorted before they finish for school. Later this afternoon, it's another early pickup. So yeah, I'm gonna be dashing around a bit this morning. So I'll leave you now and I'll join you again tomorrow for Thursday. So yeah, see you tomorrow. Bye. Hello, it's Thursday now and it's the first day of the summer holidays for my children. So I'm popping on a bit later today because we've been out this morning. We went into town to the library. We ran a few errands. We're now back at home. They've had some lunch and they're having a little flop. So I thought I'd pop in here and share with you what I'm wearing before we get going with our afternoon plans. And today, it's quite muggy today actually. Um, it's not as super hot as early this week, but it's definitely feeling a bit close. And I've got on a shirt dress that I made using this pattern here, which is the Honeycomb shirt and dress pattern by Kokowara Crafts. It's a woven shirt dress pattern. It has some really nice details on that I really like. I'll put up the line drawing so I can show you all the options and the details. So you can make it as a shirt, um, or a dress, the shirt's got this little peplum, or it's a dress with a gathered skirt. And you can make it either sleeveless or with short sleeves, or with these long sleeves with little sort of bow ties on the cuffs. Then it's got a button down front and a band collar, and then it's got a panelled bodice. And at the back, it hasn't got a picture of the back, but it's a yoke at the back, which you make using the burrito technique. And the thing I really like about this dress, other than the pretty panel bodice, which I think is a really nice feature, is these little side ties it has. So instead of sort of um, tying at the back like a lot of shirt dresses I guess do to cinch you in around the waist a bit. You insert these little ties into the um, bodice panels and you pull them at each side which I think is a really cute little feature of this pattern and I'll stand up a bit so you can see my ties on my version. I really like that detail and it's a pattern that's got a really good size range too. There's a B cup version that goes from a UK 6 up to a UK 24 and then a D cup version that goes from a UK 18 up to a UK 36 so it's a very size inclusive pattern and I do find that Kokora Crafts instructions are really good too. Um, I think my first version of this I made when I was fairly new to sewing I hadn't used the burrito method before and I guess I was probably a bit more nervous about button plackets and that sort of thing and collars um, at that point. And I found the pattern really held my hand through all the different processes involved. Oh, and it's got pockets as well. I thought I mentioned that, which is quite a handy feature. I've got a few things in my pockets at the moment for my trip into town, actually. So they were extra handy this morning for holding things my children gave to me. And in terms of the sizing of my one, I sized down on this pattern and made the smallest size, the UK size six. That is designed for a bust of 31 inches, waist of 23 inches and hips of 31 inches. So quite a lot smaller than me on the waist and hips. But the finished garment measurements show there's quite a lot of ease on this pattern. The finished garment measurements for the UK 6 are bust 34 inches, waist 32 inches if the bows aren't tied, and hips 43 inches. So I didn't want it to be too oversized, so I thought I'd go with that size. And actually, there's still quite a lot of room. And if I tie the ties, it brings it in nicely. Um, but it, I need to try to tie them all the way to bring it in fully. So I'm glad I went with that size. And in terms of the fabric that I made and um, this one in, it is a cotton cambric, I think it's called, by Atelier Brunette. It's one of their older fabrics. I don't think it's in stock anywhere now. I think I got it from Minerva, but quite a long time ago. But it's almost like a cotton lawn, I guess. And it's got this pretty sort of blue base with these little sort of origami style birds on, which I think is quite a cute little design. And I do like a bit of navy blue. And then I added on little buttons that are wooden flower shaped buttons. I think I had them in my stash and then I was looking for something that would match this dress and I thought they'd be quite cute. I'll stand up so you can see them in a bit more detail. I think they go quite nicely with the blue with the little wooden buttons. And I'll put a picture up of me wearing this dress so you can see what it looks like on. As you can see, I went for the sleeveless version and the armholes are quite nice and roomy. So it's perfect to wear on quite a sort of muggy close day like it is today. But that's what I'm wearing today. I better head off now and get my children ready. We're heading out this afternoon. So um, I will pop in again tomorrow, which will be Friday, the final day this week. So I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. 
Hello, it's Friday now. It's just coming up to lunchtime here and that seems to be quite a good time of day for me to pop in here and share with you what I'm wearing with the children around. We've had another busy morning out and about. We went across the tip and I always like a trip to the tip and they quite enjoyed seeing all the stuff that was happening there too. But we're back home now and they're having a little bit of rest before I make some lunch so I thought that was a good point to pop in here and share with you what I'm wearing today. And today it's actually quite an overcast day out there today. It's a bit chillier than it has been, so we're all quite enjoying the cooler weather. And today I've got on a fairly new make. It's one I made earlier this summer. And it's a dress I made using a pattern from this book here, which is the Breaking the Pattern book by Named Clothing. And this is a book that I've had for quite a while, at least a couple of years. And this year I thought I'm finally going to get around to making something from it because I've spent quite a lot of time sort of leafing through and admiring the patterns. But I really wanted to actually get on and sew one of them up. So I decided to sew up the shirt dress pattern in this book, which is a Sarast shirt dress. And I'll show you the line drawings. It's a woven shirt dress pattern. that has some quite pretty and slightly different details to it. So here it is. It's a sort of midi length shirt dress with a full button down front and it's got a gathered skirt but it's got this interesting feature of this flat front um, so there's no gathering right at the front bit here which I quite like, I think it's quite a nice feature. Then it's got princess seams at the front and a yoke at the back. It's got short sleeves and it's got a pretty collar with a little ruffle detail at the front which the camera I think is finding a bit hard to focus on but I'll show you the ruffle on my version. It's quite hard to see on this busy fabric but there you can see it there on both sides. I think it's a really cute feature of this pattern. And when I made my version, I actually also decided to add a ruffle on the sleeve here too, just for an extra little ruffle. You can't beat a little ruffle or two, I guess. So yeah, my version's got ruffles on the sleeves there too. And in terms of sizing, all the patterns in the um, Breaking the Pattern book go from a size um, one to nine, which is the equivalent of a UK six up to a UK 22. And the largest size is for a bust of 45 and three quarter inches. So a very tiny text there, so I had to lean right in. And it was a really nice make this one actually. Um, I really enjoyed the instructions. I found it came together really nicely. Um, I did have to jump around a little bit in the book because they do refer you to different parts for different bits of the process. But I found as long as you don't mind sort of referring through different pieces of the book, it was absolutely fine and nice and clear to follow. And I really like the fit of this shirt dress actually. Um, I find the princess seams sit just where they should do. Um, I like where the, the um, shoulder seam sits nicely too. I haven't had to make a forward shoulder adjustment like I have done on other shirt dress patterns. And I find that sort of there's plenty of room around the armholes too. So the whole fit of the bodice block just seems like it's quite a good fit for me. So it's quite a nice comfy one to wear. So I really like that. Um, in terms of sizing, I made a size one on the bust and then I graded up to a size two on the waist and hips based on my measurements. The bust for size one is 31 and a half inches, so just slightly under my size. Um, but I was closer to the size one than the size two. Um, so I went for the size one on the bust. And on the waist, the size two waist is 26 and three quarters and the hips is 36 and a quarter, so pretty much me. And I quite like the fit. I mean, it fits nicely around the bust. There's a little bit of room around the waist, but I quite like that. I could have added sort of waist ties to cinch in, but I wanted to have a little bit of a looser fit on it. And then I went for the full midi length skirt, which is not a length I've historically gone for so much, but I've actually been quite enjoying it this year. And I do quite like this shirt dress as a midi length. And it's a bit different to some of the other shirt dresses I have in my wardrobe, because I do like a shirt dress, but it's nice to have them all a little bit different. And the fabric I use for this shirt dress is a really pretty cotton lawn fabric by Dashwood Studio. So we've got a really lovely sort of very light grey base and all these different sort of blobs on it in sort of blues and maroons and teals and pinks and darker greys. I think it's a really pretty print. And then I went for navy buttons because I thought and the navy buttons would sort of showcase the button placket down the front and wouldn't get too lost in the busy print. So I think that's quite a nice feature, those navy buttons on the front. And I'll put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on. It's actually really comfy to wear and I've enjoyed getting this out quite a few times already this summer. And it was nice so too. It definitely makes me think I'd like to try some more patterns from this book. So that's what I'm wearing today. And that's the last day of this week of my handmade wardrobe. It's been a bit of a funny week with the heat wave and the children finishing school early. I'm glad the weather's sort of come down to a cooler temperature now, which is much more comfortable for us all. Um, hopefully we'll have a few nice summery days, but not too hot ahead as well. 
and I might pop on and do another one of these videos later in the holidays if you've enjoyed it I quite enjoy popping on every day actually it's really nice to sort of um yeah make me think about what I'm wearing and choosing different things and I've definitely been reaching for some things I haven't picked out for a while so that's been quite fun to get them out too so thank you very much for watching as ever if you've enjoyed this video I would love it if you give it a thumbs up um, and if you're new to my channel I would love it if you would consider subscribing too and also if you press the bell icon it means you'll be notified when my future videos come out so thank you very much for joining me for another week of my handmade summer wardrobe I'll hopefully see you for another video soon in the meantime I hope you have a great week and thanks again bye